Hot off the presses, Mike is here with me. We just watched the Windows 11 event, the live stream, which uh, started out a little bit rocky, had some issues. Now, Mike was watching, I believe, the official live stream right from Microsoft.com. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. And I was watching the live stream on YouTube via, I believe it's the CNET Highlights channel. So the reason why I did that is because there was some weird buffering issues in the beginning of the stream and CNET handled all that. Like they just went to a different title card that said technical difficulties and they kept resetting it and stuff. So I let them do the work. (laughs) I switched to that too after you recommended it. So Okay. Okay. So, but you were somehow still like a tiny bit ahead, which was weird. Um, But I mean, that's, that's just the nature of trying to sync up live streams. So uh, lots to discuss, although not as much as I thought to be, to be blunt. Uh, Mike was sort of live tweeting all along and I'll kind of get your impressions, Mike. So what did you think of the windows 11 event as a whole? Uh, yeah, I thought it was a lot shorter, like it was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Um, there are a few really cool little features. I, I don't like the weird thing to me is just like we thought last week or a couple of weeks ago when we got the leaks, this doesn't really look like a, a new windows. This looks like, you know, windows 10.1 more than windows 11. At least, at least in the you know iterations of like Windows Seven to Windows Eight was a pretty big jump, positive or negative, whatever. But it was a pretty big jump in a lot of different ways. This seems like more of a a gradual progression to uh, and, and a few like extra features here and there, right? So like, yes, there are some larger features that are usually not around for Windows Ten upgrades. At least the last few Windows Ten upgrades. But uh, it just doesn't seem like a big, like, massive event. And from what we're understanding now, this is going to be a free upgrade. Uh, don't quote us on that fully because, again, we are just watched the event. We're just kind of piecing together information as we get it. And I'll probably be researching as we talk even. So a lot of the information we're going to say now it might be wrong because we're getting it from, like, a million different sources all live and all that. So don't take it, like, as gospel. But um, that's what we're understanding. It's free upgrade. So that makes sense to me. Like they just want to, I think this is totally speculative. I think they just wanted to get back in the news cycle. Well, I was going to say that if you take a look at the differences between Windows 11 and Windows 10, uh, the big thing is the visual. So like if you really think of it, you know, the I don't like the pop up thing in the middle, like the little Windows thing, just visually. But I will say that that looks a lot more modern than what we have on the left. And it's kind of a departure from what we normally got, because the thing is, is like 11 or uh, Windows 8 and 8.1 was a big departure, right? With the full screen. I can't remember if 8.1 had it, but no, it was 8, just eight. eight definitely had the, the full screen uh, Metro. Yeah, Metro thing, which you can actually do a full screen start menu still with some setting changes in Windows 10. Uh, but, you know, this is like a, a departure from it. So there's no more harsh edges. Like I'm looking at the windows that I have open right now and uh, the harsh edges, like the corners are rounded off. Uh, the guy, uh, I always forget his name, the designer guy, he, he, uh, all, all, he kept mentioning, you know, here's this sheet of glass, which is kind of a throwback to, uh, well, in my mind, anyway, a throwback to Vista where things were kind of translucent, uh, which is still the same in windows 10. It's just, the, that's the first time it kind of showed up, or at least that's what I remember. Cause I remember it constantly shutting off. Because it would be like your PC can't perform in arrow mode or whatever. So yeah, th- there was it, it's an interesting story behind arrow mode and and the the translucency of Windows Vista. It was like the idea was great in terms of design back then, but the performance like pretty much no computers could match it. Like no right. no computers could run it properly. Where like it would spike your processor, it would spike your graphics, it would spike everything just for you having translucent Windows. Like it wasn't worth it at the time. I think they're bringing it back now because they found better ways of running it. And obviously, since the years of Vista, our computers have become more powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. And 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 I remember Vista, especially if it was having issues running something like a game or some sort of full screen application, you would try to alt tab or even if the game was running fine and you alt tab that it was pushing that processor or pushing whatever uh, it would you know tell you, hey, you know, we had to go back and we had to get we had to get out of arrow mode. So. I mean, PCs have, have come a long way. And one of the things I, I wanted to point out too, kind of related to that, is the the fact that presentations are becoming less presentations and more live. What I mean by that, to kind of dive more into that, is when they click on something like Edge or an app or the search, th- the actual user interface and computers just in general are getting to the point where they're that fast. 
mostly probably due to the SSD being able to handle multiple tasks and things being thrown at it. And this this is true for consoles. This is true for a lot of stuff. And there was also a performance boost, which I'm sure we'll talk about gaming in a bit. But there was also a performance boost announced uh, for gaming on Windows as well. But I'm glad to see that when they, you know, when they show something, even in years past, they would unless it was literally a live presentation and it was they're not going to show you the window loading, you know, in a pre-recorded video where they recorded the screen. They're just going to show the window pop up. This is even in years past when we used to use HDDs rather than SSDs. Now with SSDs and increased performance of processors and stuff, you're literally getting that where you're clicking something and it's just popping up. We've seen this, you know, started to come out in phones, obviously, in more recent years is and even in. Uh, you know, years past because they were using SSD cards and similar technologies in that regard. So it's good to see that, um, whereas I don't know if it would be as smooth as it was in the presentation, it isn't far off, which is nice because a lot of the elegance of new product is when they show it and you're like, damn, that opened fast, right? And now, like, that's a reality even now. Like, you open up Teams or whatever, there might be a little splash screen that says loading Teams, which they... Uh, which they may or may not show in 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 a presentation, um, but it's good to see that technology is reaching almost like that live presentation level. If uh, if you catch my drift, Mike, I know that's kind of rambling, but yeah, no, I, I I get it. Yeah, like the the presentation is really accurate to what we actually get nowadays because of how fast our processors and computers are and, and and the optimizations behind it and you did mention that they did they did say that there was going to be performance improvements I've, I've heard that multiple times from uh, people that have already tested out the insider not the insider build the leaked build the technically illegal leak build but um they said oh, that good. they did see some interesting <laughs> some interesting performance improvements if they were to like it, it's really difficult to test because it was kind of like you had to vm it or something like that but anyway um Hopefully we get some free performance. That would be an awesome kind of free thing to get because if the if Windows is free and we get some free performance in games and on desktop, that would be great. But uh, I don't know. It, it, that, that's not the most exciting thing for me, obviously, because Windows already performs decently well in terms of performance. I think there's a few like I don't. We should we should talk about the buckets, like the the big stuff that they announced. Definitely, so, definitely. Yeah, like so. Let, let's let let me go back to my uh, Twitter crazy tweeting. I kind of went. Uh, yeah, you were went, you were tweeting like crazy. Like I had a I had an iPhone out and my uh, Samsung out, and I was also casting. Yeah. So I was talking to you. I was verbally. I was talking. I was watching the presentation, and then I was talking to some other people that were watching the presentation as well. So it was a, a a flurry of notifications from Twitter and other people talking to me, and then regular stuff coming in. It was quite a flurry there. But uh, what do you got on the on the ticket there to to start off? Probably, if I'm willing to guess, the centered uh, taskbar with the start menu. Exactly. Yeah. So I was going to say like just the rounded corners, the design and the 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 centering of the taskbar at the start menu. Now, from what we understand, from what I understand, that start menu can be put back into the left hand corner. Um, I think they're centering it because it just like Matt was saying, even before we started recording, it looks more modern. It might not be something that we prefer, but it does look more modern and it kind of plays better for touch, which is something that they highlighted a lot. That's the other thing that I want to bring up right now is like that centering menu and some of the little things that they adjusted for the touch screen experience where like one of them you take it off the dock mode or you take it you you put it into touch mode if it's a tablet and all the icons kind of go a little bit spread out like just a tiny bit nothing crazy but that gives you a little bit easy a, a, a little bit easier of a time of tapping the right icon so and when you do that the touch the touch um, places get kind of bigger right like the what are they called? Uh, the, the the icons were like spacing out and like more appropriate for touch on the bottom on the exactly, taskbar. Yeah, larger touch targets. Right, that's what they said. So that that seemed really interesting to me because I don't have a Windows. Actually, no, I do have an old Windows tablet. I'm about to say, yeah, you definitely have an old one. Yeah, I have an old one. Definitely won't be able to run Windows 11. It does not meet <laughs> the requirements. Uh, Hardly but, meets the requirements for 10 if that's what's not even on it. Yeah, it, it it does meet the requirements for 10, but like barely. And I had to do some hacks just to get it on there. But regardless, like the pain point for me using that tablet was the touch targets, honestly. Like it just it like, yeah, I could open the start menu and tap on things. But then as soon as you get into an application and, and I don't know if they'll be able to fix this because applications are all over the place with uh, with Windows and they still will be. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, but it just seems like the, the touch experience was always worse than everything else. But now they seem to be focusing a little bit more on it. So let's talk about like 
What are your what are your takes on the start menu going to the center? I know you didn't like it at first. Are you still in the same mindset? Well, I I don't like the idea of it. Like I'm a very I'm a very like old. Uh, I always refer to myself as an old Windows user. My taskbar is not icons. It's uh, the full titles and the full big wide uh, bars for each of the programs so I can see the full title. So I know what I'm switching to. That's kind of what I use. I've always hated the UX of having to hover over. Let's say I have multiple edge windows and I have to hover over the edge icon to have the other things show up. There's like a little pop up that shows up above it so that you can select where you want to go or what you want to do. And I've always hated that. I always thought like, hey, that's an additional step. Plus, I'm waiting with the hover, you know, which is just a few seconds, but it's just not for me. I prefer to see the full title and just click on what I am doing. So that lends itself to the left aligned start menu. I will say this, though, is I do like the left aligned start menu uh, or I do like the centered start menu, I should say, uh, on a touch interface. So I have a, a Samsung Tab Pro S, which is a few years old now, and um it obviously it has a tablet mode and tablet mode uh, last time I used it, which was a couple of years ago now is literally atrocious and I never use it. And one of the main issues is because the taskbar goes away or at least it did back then. So what would happen is, is I would switch to tablet mode and then I would have like some desktop app that wasn't touch optimized, let's say, and it was just open somewhere doing something. And, and if I needed to get back to that, if I needed to do whatever, unless I was using the thing wrong, there was no taskbar. So there was no way for me to figure out like where it was. Like I couldn't just glance down at the bottom and see what was open. Um, I ended up having to like go out of tablet mode and then use a taskbar or there was like another way to see what like all what was open, but it just wasn't like glanceable. It wasn't very like friendly. And so I didn't like tablet mode. And again, it's been years now. So this is all from memory. So this this is interesting in that they showed touch and it's just the windows that you that you that you see, you know, it doesn't seem to change into quote unquote tablet mode. There's bigger touch areas and touch targets or whatever, but it's it, it's it's very much like a slightly more uh, touch enabled same interface rather than a new interface that I've seen in tablet mode from years past, which is, uh, I think, really good because it also lends itself to the quick transformation of a computer. Right. So you have your tablet mode out. Uh, you're like, you know, you, you're walking around or maybe you're on teams or whatever. And then you snap your keyboard on now, presumably it will detect that and then turn off its own tablet mode, making those touch targets more precise, more smaller for mice and trackpads. Right. But the thing is, is that it's the same interface. So you can easily just go and click and almost in the same spot and find what you were doing. You don't have to go like, oh, like, where's all my windows at? Like you would in tablet mode, like what's open, what's this? You have to like reorient yourself from tablet mode to not tablet mode in Windows 10 from the, the version I used a couple years ago. So this is a big jump from what I saw, which is nice. Uh, I would also like to say about the start menu is the the when you click the start menu button or the start button, whatever, you have the big menu that opens in the center of the screen. And I kind of think and I haven't seen the leaks I, I, I kind of th- sort of a screenshot and I kind of think that even if you left align it, which I'm probably going to do almost immediately, even if you left align that start menu, I have a feeling that the menu, the start menu is going to still open in the center. I don't know if that's true, but it looked a lot more modern because it it, it, f- it has a multifunction now. So one of the things that they showed, if memory serves, is you click on the start menu and it shows you like you have a search bar. You can like type in search and like type in whatever you want, like, oh, I want to go to the Zoom app or whatever. But there's also like some continuing things. So like I've like this is definitely present in, let's say, Word right now. So if I open up Word, I have I have Microsoft 365. And if I open up Word on my phone or if I open up Word here on my desktop, it will then it'll show me the last like four files or whatever that I was working on. Right. Especially since I'm syncing with OneDrive and everything. Uh, it does the same thing or seemingly. But in this case, it like detects, OK, you know, I'm signed into the same Microsoft account on Windows 11 and on my phone. And I was working on a Word doc called like hello on my phone in the start menu now. Maybe I have to search it. I don't know. But in the start menu now, they showed like, oh, you know, it'll show you your recent your recent stuff your recent uh, files, your recent things that you were working on. So you can just kind of continue working. So I believe that probably just shows up. Like I haven't, obviously I haven't tried the workflow yet, but like I presume that you just press start and it shows you your recent stuff unless you have to search for that. But like, that's kind of handy. But I was telling Mike is like, one of the things that I'm worried about is with, and this will lend itself right to the, the team's chat, which I'll, I'll talk to you in a second, Mike, but 
is these like disassociations with the native apps, if you will. So one of the things that I've always struggled with, and I, th- I think Windows has always struggled with, is getting stuff to come up live properly when it's not on the app itself. So we've had it like I've had uh, um, issues with like, let's say we open up the Microsoft 365, uh, Microsoft Word, and then everything's all signed in. So I'm, I'm going to Microsoft 365 or the, uh, Microsoft Word, sorry. Everything's signed in. So that works. Right? That's using the native app. But if I try to use like one of the little like side things. So for example, in the past, we used to have upload center, which would try to like upload to one drive or something. And it would try to do this and that. That's like a separate piece. That's not in word. It's like works with word. And from the, the issues I've seen in the past where it has trouble syncing, it has trouble uploading, it has this and that. I'm worried that that little tool tip thing, that recent files, that whatever you want to t- whatever you want to call it, I'm worried that that's not going to update fast enough or it's not going to work well or it's not going to it's not, it's going to grab the wrong files or it's going to mess up because it's like one step removed. And they're doing the same with teams. So I'll kind of let you kind of take the floor with that. Right. Yeah. So teams is a weird Teams was a weird announcement to me because, first of all, it's already been announced, like it's already been available for everyone that wants to use it. But now they're kind of pushing it as the new de facto like chatting app on uh, Microsoft, like uh, Windows, which great. Like Teams isn't bad and they've done a lot of improvements over the time. Like over the years, it's, it's gotten way better. Notifications come in way more smoothly than they used to. It's still not perfect, but it's way better. Uh, and it's a decent app, but like Am I supposed to like sell Teams to my family now and try to get them to use Teams? Like, and it isn't my my biggest problem with it is the branding behind it because like Teams sounds like a business application. It is a business application. That's what it was meant to be. But now they're refocusing it on everyone. So like they did mention eyes, Skype though. They did mention Skype by name they? only. They mentioned Skype by name only. I didn't hear I didn't hear anything about Skype, but I'll, 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 maybe when they, they said did. like connect with your family, they were like whether you're using Zoom, Skype, or Teams, and then they kind of like transitioned at some point over to what you're talking about. But continue. Yeah, like maybe I didn't understand what 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 they were doing then because why? I agree. Why no, did, I agree. I'm not really sure either. Yeah, like why did they mention all the other chatting apps? Is that supposed to be like a, a Teams integration <laughs> where you can chat with everyone regardless of their app? Because that would be crazy. I don't think that's good. that's the case. Because that I don't think that's like the case. A, that no. seems like a way too complicated problem to solve. But like it se- it seemed to me, from what I understood from it, that they just want everyone to use Teams. Teams has good video chatting, good chatting, and stuff like that, which makes sense. But again, I just don't understand the Teams nomenclature. Like, why not just rebrand it or something like to so that everyone uses it? But Anyway, like it, it did seem okay. Like the team, the team side of it seemed okay. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about that kind of goes into your like, you know, take it off and go into tablet mode and go back to dock mode is the fact that they actually added a really cool feature when you dock your, uh, if it's a tablet or a laptop, doesn't matter, and you put a screen into it. Let's say you have your, you have multiple screens on your lap, like on your laptop and another screen. And you've opened like a hundred different apps and they're all over your screens. When you un when you unplug your screen, it will minimize all the applications that were on the other screen. It does not do that right now. Right now it just reshifts all the focus. It puts all of your old all your applications on the other screen on your one screen and everything just kind of goes disaster mode. Um, and I hate that. But what they're doing with Windows 11 is that they're actually minimizing them all. Now, let's say you take it, go to the coffee shop, do some work, come back home and replug it back in. It will re it will maximize all the applications Mac that where they were exactly how they were on your other screen. So it remembers your work state depending on what you're doing, which I think is a really good feature. I'm really tempted to try it out uh, whenever the beta comes out. That's something that I'll definitely like. That's one of the first things that I'll try out and I'll report on on Twitter. So you check that out at HTML everything, but like it's, it's an interesting, that's an interesting mindset. They want, they want you to be able to like kind of use the same device for multiple different workflows, which is something that I've always wanted to do. And I think Matt, you kind of are doing that right now. I know you're not using your laptop as much for, for work and docking, but I feel like that's going to be a big thing for you. Yeah. Like I do, uh, I do use my laptop in like mobile mode for work. Like I'll bring it to like the living room and I'll like work on stuff there and I don't like dock it. That's for sure. Right. I don't really dock it. And, um, 
I can definitely see like one of the things that like was the plan with that laptop was to dock it. I actually have a dock. I just haven't used it. Um, but I can definitely see that feature being huge. And I think it also it also lends itself to really like developers, I would actually say, like and, and other fields as well. But obviously we're in this field, so we know more about it. And it would be interesting to say like, OK, you know, I'm I'm going to code up this little bit of my app, like my Android app. I'm going to code up this button. Let's see if it works. And then you already have this like sort of layout pre-saved and then you connect to the monitor and like the Android emulator opens up on that external monitor and you like immediately start testing it, stuff like that. And I'm sure there's a million other use cases that you can use. That would be, that's really cool. Also stuff like, um, personally, I like to have a smaller secondary monitor. So I have two monitors, one big one and one small one. And I, it's because I like throwing non main things over to the secondary monitor. And even though it has less screen real estate, you could say, why do you want less screen real estate? It's because I'm trying to deep, deprioritize if you will so like right now i have the zoom call open but i've done what i need to do with the zoom call so i just need to glance over at it every now and then make sure it's still working that's on my left monitor so it would be cool to have little use cases like that where right now i'm looking at my audacity to make sure my levels are okay and everything else it's live but the zoom call has been dealt with so i throw that off to the side i don't want that taking up an equal amount of real estate in my peripheral or in my main vision when i look over i just want it to be a glanceable thing and so having let's say the the uh the memory of it like knowing what window i want where my mo- my laptop monitor the one that's built in is probably going to be a slightly smaller than the monitor i'm using at the time so maybe that maybe my laptop monitor will naturally become my secondary monitor that's something that i i i find interesting um as well also having the i forget what they call it but having the tabs remember their own layout is huge as well. Like this is without the whole, you know, connecting the laptop to the monitor thing. This is just like straight up on a computer. It will remember your like layouts. So I think this is huge for devs, but also other people too, that probably work in media or like it need multiple programs or whatever it is. You know, I, you know, we'll have, let's say like a one screen full of all our chat apps for personal one screen full of all our chat apps for work. And you can, seemingly just flip between them you can just say like hey load this tab layout load this tab layout and i forget what they called it it was like it was like tab collections or something like that where you could like click on a layout now how again how that workflow works they showed it very briefly i haven't used it but that is super interesting to me because i'll like imagine just being able to be like all right it's time to record a podcast you click on whatever this tab layout is and it opens up zoom it opens up audacity it opens up teams or whatever else you need open it just opens everything and just starts going. And that's super interesting to me. That sounds really familiar, though. Like, it sounds like it's on something else. They said that that tab layout thing is only on Windows or something. Uh, I can't remember whether that was, like, the tab layouts, which is, like, them visually showing layouts, like, three columns or, like, two columns or this and that, or whether that was the tab groups. I can't remember which one they said was exclusive to Windows. But... um I think it's pretty big. And the thing is, is this, is one of the big things that came to Windows 10 was multiple desktops. And I actually don't use it. I've tried to use it and it worked and like it worked well. There's nothing wrong with it from a technical perspective. And I've used it successfully myself for my own workflow. But for some reason, and I don't know why that reason is, but for some reason, I just could not get into it. I just couldn't keep using it. Like I just would, I would forget it exists. I would just be like, oh, like whatever. And then like months later, be like, holy crap, you you can use multiple desktops. And I would then try it again. It would work successfully, and then I'd forget about it again. But something like this, because it's like right on the taskbar, this and that, it seems like it's more in your face, and so I'm probably going to actually use it more, which is nice. Um, what do you think about that, Mike? What do you think about these like sort of tab layouts, which is like them visually saying, like, do you want a three column, like a three column with a thing in the corner, like this and that, two column, vers- and also like the tab collections where like you click on something and it brings up all your tabs. Um, or all your snaps or what, I don't know what you'd call them, but it's sort of like, it'll bring up all your little things that were snapped all up at once. Like it remembers like, oh, you had zoom on the left and like teams on the right. And then if you click this like little collection thing, it brings those both up again. What do you think about that? So in an ideal world, what you do is you kind of like set it up for a few different workflows and you're good to go and, and, and great. Um, and that's something that I'm going to try to do. I'm I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely going to try it. But my anticipation is it's going to be the same as the window, the desktops for me. It's like it's just too much of overhead for me to to be able to consistently use it. 
because I, I'm constantly doing a million different things. Even if I'm working on it, like if I'm working on a single project for a, a, an extended period of time, yes, that could be great, but I'm not usually. Usually I'm working on many different projects, even throughout the day I'll switch, which isn't great, but whatever, like that's, that's the reality that I'm in. And it just, I don't think it'll fit my workflow as well as I want it to, if, if that makes sense. Like I want to use it. I really want to use it, but I just, I'm not sure if I'll be able to commit to using a feature like that. It sounds cool. The other thing that they did announce was the snap, the, the snap uh, grid layout. So that, that, that's the thing I'm talking about with the layouts. Like, I don't know what it is where they had like two call and that type of thing. Yeah. So, so essentially it'll, it'll allow you to pick where you want your apps to be on a screen. So you can like right now, what you can do, like in today's windows, you can press windows button, left windows button, right on your keyboard, and you could snap it to the left and right top to bottom. Well, they're proposing a different system where you can actually choose a completely like customizable grid layout where you can put like something on the whole left half of the screen and then three apps, you know, in a column up top to bottom on the right side of the screen. And you can kind of customize that inside these snap groups. So I like that. I might use that actually pretty often, especially when I'm developing and I need to see my like console. I need to see, uh, I need to see my, like the, the browser. Maybe I need to see a couple different browsers just to see how they're looking. And I also need to see the documentation. Like I might use that in that case. Cause right now I kind of have to custom do it. And I do that sometimes. Um, I have three monitors, so it doesn't affect me as much because I can put stuff on all over my monitors. But even then, I run out of space pretty consistently. So that that to me was pretty interesting. I'll definitely try it out. I don't think it's anything game breaking or anything like that. Well, I think that if you use those tab layouts, you'll actually use those other that other thing because it, it seems like it, they they go together, right? Like if you get all your development stuff up, like your this is to make it simple, two columns, and you have your VS Code and then your CMD, right? In your two columns, which split the screen in half, you would probably save that as like VS Code or whatever, and then you would always pull that up. So you're like, I need a code right now. Click, click. Right. Rather than you being like VS code snap, like I think you might do it a few times where you like manually snap them right now, whether it's with the script keyboard shortcut or dragging it. But then you would realize like, hey, you know, this is like a bad idea. Like, you know, like this is inefficient. I think you would slowly change that. And 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 that actually is. Is important, I think, when you realize that whatever it is that you're doing is inefficient in comparison to what else is there. Like the multiple desktops can be efficient if you have so many windows open. But like me personally, like I close windows, I close tabs, I do stuff like that. So it, it's not as important to me, right? I can have separate workspaces, one's for chat, one's for this, one's for that. But then sometimes I forget that app is open and I don't know what tab it's open in and that could be inefficient. But something that's revolutionary, and this has been in the Windows for a while, but something that's revolutionary that changed how Windows works is the search in the start menu. You know, Windows XP, I think you had to find everything. You had to click on mm -hmm. out and click start all programs, this and that. And so then you realize like you, people probably continue to do that into Vista, right? Start all programs and they go and they search for the program that they're working on. The it, It's actually inefficient, right? And so then start search becomes really critical, really important. And it seems like it's a pretty big uh, productivity focus, I would say, of Windows 11, which is kind of why I wanted to talk about that as well. So. Right now, obviously, they have everything centered and it shows up in the center and they typed in like settings and it shows up and this and that. And I presume it also shows like web results and stuff like that, like it normally does. But Mike, you were saying that you really want search to be fixed slash repaired slash improved in Windows 11 versus Windows 10. Now, I don't have many issues with Windows 10. The only thing I have with Windows 10 search is I have two profiles on my computer so i have my regular profile that i use for everything and then i have like a local profile that i use for streaming so i have all my just my streaming files there i don't want to like sift through all my stuff to find what i need on a stream uh so one of the issues i have is i'll like go type like start and type in like the pictures folder or something and it'll open up the streaming profiles one when i'm on the other profile like it's really weird like i have that's my only issue and like that just sounds like a bug of some sort uh, or an algorithmic issue or something. What is the issues that you have and what do you hope to see in this new start menu search from Windows 11? So to be fair, I haven't had too many crazy issues in the past probably year and a half or so. So maybe they have fixed some stuff, but I have adjusted like from before when I had the issues, I did adjust my uses of search. So maybe that's why I'm not having the issues. But essentially what was happening is like... I, 
a lot of applications that maybe aren't Windows native or something like that wouldn't show up there. So I have I still have that issue with with some like games that I download and stuff like that. Like I'll just search for a game and it's not there, even though it's on the computer. So it doesn't search, in my opinion, it doesn't search everything. It searches certain fo- folders that it thinks are most important. And then it doesn't search everything else, at least in the search menu there. Uh, the other thing that I was having, and I think a lot of people have reported is like, you would type in, you would start typing in something that you want from the control panel, because that's really the main thing that I use the search for is like different settings, like setting Bluetooth or something. So I start typing in blue and it's it like after I type in like two letters, it'll find it. And as soon as I type in another letter of the same word, it'll go to some completely different application. Uh, I've definitely seen that. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, that yeah. was a real pain in the ass to me because like it, it just doesn't make sense. Like they should know and <laughs> they should know what I'm searching for after so many people have done it. And they just they, they put like the most random applications in there that yes, they have like if it's Bluetooth, they'll have like blue in the name, but it's something that I've literally never clicked on in my life. <laughs> like, like blue square dot JPEG. Yeah. Yeah. Like what the heck is going on here? Like why, why do I need that? Obviously, I'm looking for Bluetooth when I'm in the search anyway. They don't seem to have good predictive predictive text. Having said that, I think it's gotten better over the years. So if, as long as yeah. they're improving it, great. And if Windows 11 brings even more improvements, awesome. Then there's not really any complaints that I can have. So yes, it's gotten better. I think it still has some issues here and there. Uh, so hopefully that that's why I was hoping for like maybe a complete rethink a little or a, a rethink of the system um, so that we can get a little bit more consistency in the Windows search. And and one thing I, I, I want to bring up too, and th- this this applies to Windows Search. It also applies to the widgets that that are another thing which I'll mention and I'll describe in a second. And then there, it also applies to um, uh, web search in different areas. So I'll just kind of I'll just kind of like talk about it. So right now, widgets is a new thing, uh, kind of like a throwback to Vista, kind of. And basically, what it is is it's like a tab that opens. So it's sort of like that new like news and interest tab. If you see that they had like the weather on your taskbar, like right now in Windows 10, and you have the update and it like opens up a little thing that like shows your interest and stuff. It's kind of similar, I would say, visually to that, except the guy kept saying that it opens up in a vi- in a beautiful paint pane of glass. It's just a translucent window. <laughs> let's like let's calm it down. Um, but like, I mean, I get it. Like if I designed it, I'd be like, look at this beautiful, you know, I, I would do the same thing. Um, so I'm not faulting him. But uh, it opens up like a bunch of uh, like little widgets. Like, you know, here's the traffic in this area. Here's the weather. Here's this and that. You scroll down. There's news. It looks like it's customizable to some degree, right? There's a bunch of stuff in there. You can put probably your own widgets in there. And I'm sure developers can probably make their own for their own Microsoft Store, which we'll touch on in a bit in a second. But then there's also, like I said, the recent files thing in the start. And then I assume... Although I can't remember if they mentioned it. I assume when you search something on uh, the search, like on the start, it will open up suggested things. So there's like uh, the suggested files, which I assume it will also show up in search and or whatever. Like there's they're in there somewhere. And then pr- presumably web searches. And so I wanted to ask you, Mike, like what's your thought on predictive stuff? Because me, just real brief, I have an issue with predictive stuff, and that is not the predictive text. I'm talking about predictive content, an example that we can use right now so people understand what I'm talking about. You go to the mail. You, If you use Windows 10 mail or whatever, the mail app on Windows 10 right now, you have that in your start menu and you turn the live tile on. When are you ever going to click on start and wait to see what's on that live tile? Now, extrapolate that and say, OK, I want to read the news. You click on something to read the news that is an algorithmic experience. Usually the news is curated to you, especially if you use something like Apple News or something like that, or even Microsoft News. It's curated to you at, certain, at a certain thing. And that makes sense to have that algorithmic. But here's the thing. When have you ever said, you know what? I need the weather. I'm going to go and click on my widgets thing. And like, hopefully, like algorithmically, the weather shows up there. Now, I presume you can like anchor stuff there and maybe it doesn't, maybe it's less algorithmic than I'm thinking. But like, I would... If I need the maps, for example, if I need the maps, I'm not going to go to my widgets. I'm just going to type in, I'm going to start M-A-P-S, enter, and then I'm just going to be on maps. So what is like, what's your thought on on this like live tile uh, slash algorithmic finding of stuff like in the widgets and stuff like, do you use stuff like this? Do you rely on stuff like this? Because to me, if you're going to reach for something, then you reach for something. I don't go and hope that my live tile opens up the email that I was anticipating, I open up mail and I check if the freaking email came in. Yeah. The live tiles have always been kind of a mystery to me too. Like I don't see a lot of use out of them. Uh, I hardly ever notice them really, which is great. Um, 
which is i mean that's a in my opinion that's a good thing because like at least they're not in my way right a lot of the times like window or some other operating system will add a feature and they want you to use it and they force you to use it and they put it kind of front and center always in your way so like that i don't like that but with live tiles at least they're not in in my way with widgets on the other hand um i think it's more direct so like if you're going into widgets your your intention is to see random crap essentially and uh maybe that's just something that they've researched enough that people like to do like the the the, the google discovery page i used to use it all the time i used to what, you know, what is that i can't remember like google discovery so page. on on like uh pixels and like other phones you could swipe right on the home screen and it'll take you to like a, a google discovery page which will show you like Stuff related events to you so like if you have like a calendar event coming up as well as mixed in with uh, news articles as well as mixed in with potential traffic like exactly what you were talking about but essentially a feed of only that and right. like weather randomly like um i used to use that all the time just to see like news around me and stuff like that and then it just got a little bit too polarizing for me uh it got a little bit too newsy like there was there was way more news than all my other more important stuff because <laughs> like, it makes the most sense to have that alg- be algorithmic because exactly. you don't know you don't know what you're reaching for you just know you're reaching for news correct but i liked i liked it when it had like for instance when I, it, what it used to do is like i used to drive somewhere and park my car and then i would walk like stand up walk away from my car and when i switched back to that tab it would show me my parking location it would have contextual smart things like that um, and there was other there was other examples. I'm just trying to like think think of some, but it had it had a lot of stuff like that where it was like very contextual, uh, and and nice and more targeted towards like utility stuff for me. Would you so, would you reach for that though if you were like, man, where's my car? Would you open the Google Maps app where I assume it would have that information, or would you be like, man, I hope a live tile? Yeah, I guess you know, like has a, this. that that might have been like a bad example, but like I did enjoy. <laughs> I don't know why it was kind of like a a thing that was like, oh cool, there's there that's where I park my car. And it showed me like a little map of it. it. It was kind of a more, it wasn't a more utility thing for me as it was like just me like, oh, that's interesting that it knows that and it shows me that. So maybe that's why they removed it because it's not really useful. But um, they had other stuff like it, it had a lot more stuff targeted towards me. Now they have a separate tap that you have to do to get to that stuff. So you swipe and then you tap and then it gives you a bunch of like your calendar events and stuff like that. So that like, one more tap actually made me like not want to use the program not want to use Google Discover Feed. So I think in anticipation with what Microsoft's doing with widgets, which is essentially the same thing, uh, more, more more structured, I think you can set up what widgets you want to see and what you don't. Yeah, it's um, going to be you... more like having widgets on like an iPhone home screen, except it's just in this pane, right? Yeah, like it's, it's not, just in the pane. It's yeah. not going to be so algorithmic, but again, I would not w- I would not go to the Maps widget. I would just go to Maps. Right, exactly. So I, I'm probably not going to use it as well. And like I can see – Maybe we'll see. Maybe this is something we'll report in, like, because I do use, like, the calendar widget. A calendar widget makes a lot of sense. Hey, what's my next event? I don't want to open the calendar app. Just click on the click on the next. So maybe there's, like, some certain things. And you're right. There's probably market research that says people like going through things like the old Google discovery feed, and they like figuring that stuff out. And that's, you know, something that's 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 great for them. Um, last couple of things that we have to uh, that we should cover, I suppose, is we have uh, we have the there was a, a bit of a gaming update. Uh, and then a Microsoft Store update. So, like, we, I don't think we've covered everything. Like, they've rounded the corners of Windows. I think you may have mentioned that. Yeah. There's something that we didn't really talk about, but it's like, okay. <laughs> I'm more of a utilitarian Windows user, so I'm just trying to be like, all right, that's fine. And I might even, like, turn that off if I can, right? It's just one of those things. Um, but, I mean, it looks nice, but, I mean, I might not use it. But, like, uh, what do you think about what do you think about the uh, gaming update? So, they showed off the new, uh, well... It looks the same Xbox app, uh, which is uh, it has Xbox Game Pass or PC in there. And uh, it also has a it also has game streaming. So if you don't know, Xbox Game Pass, and Xbox Game Pass PC and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate uh, is basically a subscription service. It's basically the Netflix of games is the easiest way to say it. And you get to choose your platform. Do you want PC? Do you want Xbox or Ultimate is both, including the Xbox Live Gold, which allows you to use Xbox Live on your Xbox console. So uh, basically on a PC now, it sounds like you'll be able to uh, basically do their their what was referred to as xCloud. That was like the name of the project before it really came to light. And so right now it's only available on phones and it's available 
in the browser for people that are invited. And yes, I am invited. And yes, I've tried it. Um, so, or I think it's on PC. I know for sure I've tried it in the browser on my, uh, on my iPad, but anyway, I don't, I don't use it too much yet, so I can't like comment fully on that, but you'll be able to stream games, uh, to the computer. And it sounds like games are going to be getting a performance boost overall. So this sounds really good for people that want to play a game that have maybe a slightly older hardware. Maybe the hardware will be able to handle it now because there's going to be some uh, there's like some saving stuff and some CPU optimizations and stuff like this. They had specific names for it, but there's optimizations. Optimizations are always good, especially if they work. Always good. That's that's great to hear. Uh, and it's great to hear that they are bringing game streaming in because it makes a lot of sense to game stream a game that's always online anyway. So you don't have to download a 100 gig game or whatever. Uh, you can just stream it because if the internet's out, the internet's out and then the game doesn't function anyway. So um, assuming the latency and that type of stuff is good. I mean, that sounds really good to me. It also makes a lot of sense to bring uh, Windows closer to Xbox, if you will. So just kind of have that Xbox app and you could probably just, you know, assign a desktop to your Xbox if you wanted to do it that way, even though I've just complained about multiple desktops. Uh, you could probably just do that or have one of those uh, snap layouts or uh, whatever they call them, where you can like pull up the different tabs. You could have like your Discord at half the screen and Xbox at half the screen or something like that. Uh, or have like an external monitor to see that. To see, like there's a use case where you grab your laptop. You want to have the Xbox app open, but like you have that always open on your TV. You connect your laptop to your TV and then have like the Xbox app always open because it remembers that you always have the Xbox app open on on your TV, on your external display, stuff like that. Like these are the use cases that I think are going to be like game changers that are actually like disrupting of regular behavior where you're like, you know what? It's inefficient for me to always open the Xbox app. So I think these improvements are really good. Mike, what are your, what's your take on them? Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, the Xbox game pass system in general. I think it's like the one subscription that you need for gaming. Like if, if you're, if you're just getting into gaming or if you have like, uh, maybe you're not like a huge, you know, collector or whatever, because like for collecting, obviously you still need to buy, uh, it has so many games in there and it has so much value in that whatever it is per month. Like, what is it? I think the ultimate is like $15 a month. Yeah, I think I'm paying like 15 or I, I have promotional grandfather pricing, so I'm not yeah. actually sure. But it's something it's like, like 15 that, or yeah. 17 after tax or something in Canadian. So, yeah. And you get like a lot of games. Not only do you get like older games, you get like brand new games that come out day one. Not all of them, but you get a lot of them. You get the Microsoft ones. You got Outriders, yeah. which is not a Microsoft title. That was day one. Yeah, there's a bunch of not even Microsoft ones that are day one. So, like, realistically, you never have to buy a game again. As long as you're a casual gamer and you're just, like, in it for the entertainment value and you're not, like, a fanboy of a certain game. There's so much variety and so much stuff there that you're good. Especially if you have, like, kids and you just want to get them something and not have to worry about going to the store or getting them on like a million different platforms, you just give them a game pass subscription. You're good to go. Like they can play whatever the heck they want. Um, it's a really, really good system. And they're definitely winning the hearts of a lot of uh, gaming communities and stuff like that with it. The windows store is an interesting one. So they announced a few things for the windows store. Uh, that's is it, like is, a, actually, that was a, sorry, just to stop you. Is it windows store or Microsoft store? I don't know. It's a good question. I think it's Microsoft store. Like Maybe what's Microsoft it right store. now? What's it right now? No it's Microsoft Store in Windows 10. I'm let's say, right let's say it. it's Microsoft Store again. Uh, they, I don't sure. think they rebranded it to Windows okay. Store. So let's say Microsoft Store. They they announced some interesting things there. Like they said they rebuilt it from the ground up. I don't know how I feel about that statement. <laughs> it doesn't look like it was fully rebuilt, but yeah, sure. It doesn't look like it was fully rebuilt. You're yeah, right. It doesn't yeah. look like it, but, but sure. Let, let's say let's say it was. Um, they've – the big thing that they added, I think, over everything else is they added support for the Amazon – Amazon App Store, which is essentially the Android App Store without Google. Uh, so now you're able to like download Android apps that don't have Google services right from the Windows Store and manage them right from the Windows Store, which is cool. I mean, she's using that emulation Intel technology or something, right? They yeah, exactly. The similar what they've used before. Like it's it's cool, but honestly, like I just do, I, I I don't see the use case for myself. I see some value of it. For ARM-based Windows laptops, though, or ARM-based Windows tablets, I can see that being really cool. Because, again, a big problem with Windows on a tablet is the fact that there's not enough, there's not enough applications that are touch-optimized. 
there's pretty much no no applications that are touch optimized on Windows, other than some of like the native applications and even not all of them. So giving you the ability to use any Android app, or I shouldn't say any, any Android app that doesn't have Window, uh, Google Play services, which is, it's a lot of Android apps, but it's not all of them, uh, is, is nice. So you'll be able to do some stuff that's touch optimized on your tablet uh, with Windows. So I guess I'm assuming that was their mindset for this. I don't think it's like a, again, I don't think it's a huge deal. I'm personally don't, I don't care because I like the Windows applications that exist already. So I'm not going to use any Android alternatives. And if I wanted to, I can connect my phone uh, using like the whatever phone companion app and just use it from my phone if I if I had a particular application I wanted to use. But um, it's it's nice that they're adding that. They're giving more options. Uh, they mentioned PWAs a couple of times. I do want to bring that up. That's the progressive web app infrastructure. Which I missed completely. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, I, I caught that. They said it by name like a couple of times during the Windows event. So that, you know, that gives it more more uh, legitimacy in, in the industry. I think PWAs are becoming more and more popular. It's not like a rapid increase or a rapid you know chart going up, not exponential, but it is slowly going up and becoming more viable as, a, as an option for certain applications. I think for like certain uh, maybe company-wide applications, it's a no-brainer, stuff like mm-hmm. that, where you, where you can set uh, send people like a, a list of instructions on how to install it. But the advantage of it being on the on the Windows Store, which it already could be, I don't, I'm not saying that's a new feature, but the advantage of it is that the installation process, the updating, all that's handled by the Windows Store. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to spread your app to users, even if it's a PWA. So I like that. I like uh, the fact that we can put PWAs, Win32s, and UWPs, and now I guess Android apps through the Amazon Store, all on one store. I think that's a good move. Yeah, I think that's a good move. I think it's a good move. I think it's an interesting move in that, like, the technology could be used elsewhere, too. Maybe eventually there would be Google Play services one day or something. Uh, I will say that the Amazon App Store, you know, I've seen this, I've seen this, uh, you know, song and dance before on BlackBerry 10. They brought the Amazon App Store over. You could run uh, Android apps on BlackBerry 10. And, you know, it didn't really work out too well, obviously, in the in the end. Now, whether, you know, whether that's due to the Amazon App Store or this and that. Uh, you know, I did use the Amazon App Store. There was some good stuff on there. But again, a lot of the stuff uses Google Play services, which is, as far as I know, only available on Android uh, itself. So even if you try to use like BlueStacks, which is a very common Android emulator, uh, I don't think that even that, for example, has uh, Google Play services, which is like super unfortunate. But I mean, it'll be interesting to see Android apps emulated right in Windows seemingly natively. Now, here's the question. Uh, and like, I don't know whether someone has the answer for this, but the question is, does this only run on Intel processors? Because it's an Intel uh, technology. So I wonder whether this only runs on Intel processors. Will it run on AMD? And it's just like an Intel program, like an emulator that's running. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not versed in that. Uh, so I'm not sure on that part. Uh, I will say this is like, and I realize this is probably just for choice, but I meant we mentioned Teams before, and like Teams is it, Teams is up and coming. It has like its own app still already, obviously, right? It exists on Windows 10, but when Teams is being plugged into Windows, so like Windows is is has this little like thing you can click on the bottom taskbar, and the little like Teams chat thing pops open, so you can start using Teams without opening the app. That's one of those things where it like integrates into Windows again. Uh, so it's like being removed from the app. And that was like one of the things that I was kind of c- discussing about earlier. And um, one of the things I wanted to mention is like, so, OK, um, what are we talking about, Mike? I forget the topic. <laughs> T- teams integration. Oh, teams integration. But what was the other thing we were just talking about? The, the store. The store. With, with, uh, with Amazon, with the Amazon Prime or, or the Amazon apps and stuff like that. I forget my complete train of thought. I don't know what I'm talking about <laughs> Your now. Your train of thought has completely Not, yeah, wandered it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. I have no idea now. So take it away, Mike. Okay. Uh, so I don't know. Like, I think I think that's most. Oh, uh, the, for the for developers, they released something really cool for developers. Um, I I didn't actually catch this. Matt caught this, so that's good that you were listening and I wasn't. Uh, they said that you could actually disable uh, profit sharing with the store. So if you're not using the store to gain. Not, like to gain people using your app and uh, you know using their advertising system, the discovery process, you can actually disable it, and therefore the Windows Store won't take any cut 
and you're able to just use your own kind of, you know, discovery engines that you already use, like Twitter or whatever the heck, and get people to use your app, pay for stuff inside the app that's on the Windows Store and not have to give any of that money to Microsoft. Um, yeah, I that's super interesting. That's, that's a jab at Apple, too. Yeah, that's a jab at Apple and Android. Like, that's a huge jab. Uh, I'm really I, I haven't seen this mentioned in any of the articles that I'm reading. So I'm really interested to see how people take this. Uh, I'm assuming developers will be really happy about it, but I'm just I'm just curious to see what uh, what the mindset is on this. But if that's truly the case, uh, hats off to Microsoft because that that is a disruptor, and that could bring a lot more competition to the store ecosystem. Because right now the Microsoft Store is not in any competition with Apple or uh, Google. Like it's not it's, in the greatest of shape. Yeah, it's, it's not, not in the greatest, greatest of shape. shape. It's sure. It, I don't want to say it's it's not better. Like it, it's just there's nothing about it that's really that great. I really have only used it for uh, Game Pass, and even that experience has been a disaster. I've talked about it on previous podcasts where I had to like uninstall a game and reinstall it, um, or that, that that's what I was suggested to do, or even you no know, nuke Windows. I was suggested to oh, yeah, nuke reset Windows. your PC. Yeah, reset. Yeah, I had to like start re- reset your PC, and that's it. Uh, so that's been an interesting thing for me like I, i'm hoping that the windows store will start competing with the other stores and start getting some more serious application development on there because i don't mind using windows applications if they're updated frequently and they work well they just haven't been that good so i i don't use them like the, I'm, I'm talking about like the store applications i usually use their counterparts like web app counterparts or their windows 32 counterparts like uh that's just what I've been used to. But if the store all of a sudden provides this great experience, sure, I'll go to it. Uh, I also remember my train of thought now, so I'm just going to blurt this out before I forget it. So one of the things I wanted to say was uh, with the uh, Amazon apps and with the Teams, so there's Teams the app, then there's this integration with Windows now where you don't have to open the app. Then there's also Amazon apps, and then you also have the Microsoft Store. But here's the thing. They also released... Uh, the uh, connect to this P- connect to your PC or this PC slash your phone app, right? The phone companion whole thing. And this is one of those weird things where they they have they push this thing, especially out with Samsung, seemingly where they're like, hey, you can emulate apps on uh, you can not not even emulate it. You're you're mirroring your phone and you're opening like WhatsApp, but on your phone, but you can see it on Windows and you're like mirroring. It's almost like mirror cast, if you will, um, to the monitor like you're it's like casting it over. And it's it's interesting. Like I have a Note 10 Plus and I think like some of these features are exclusive to Samsung or at least they timed exclusive or something. I can open like multiple apps, have multiple windows and this and that. And I realized that it's um, I realized that it's 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 a it's just a choice, right? Like I can use this. I can use that. I can use this. But it's 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 like it's interesting to see. Like I find that the the this PC slash your phone set up to be really clunky and then they're like. In, they're like innovating, if you will, the desktop experience, but then they're innovating with like another layer. So it's like, oh, just bring on Android apps right onto right onto our store and like bring Android apps right onto the computer effectively. But also on top of that, use Teams, but also use Teams in this widget. See, this is where I start getting like a anno- like worried, I guess, is because it's like, OK, how many like degrees of separation it's like it's like if we as web developers went like okay matt or uh, matt makes a web app so i make a web app mike makes a web app and i don't know jim makes a web app whoever hell jim is jim makes a web app and they're all the same but like mike or like i put in a bunch of sports data let's just say i record all the super bowls and who wins and like the scores sure so i do that for all of history all the super bowls bam there we go big list then mike does the same website in a slightly different style, but he pulls from my information and then Jim pulls from Mike's information. How many points of failure we have? We have two points of failure now. And I just have this sinking suspicion that it's like, I don't really trust the, your phone app quite yet. Like for example, I'm almost hundred percent certain. It says it supports RCS. Whenever I send a message in a conversation, that's RCS. It sends an SMS. So I don't know what's going on there. It receives an RCS, but it sends an SMS. And it's just, I'm not quite there. And I, I always reach for that sort of native v- uh, vanilla experience where like, I'll reach for the Teams app. I'll reach for the WhatsApp app. I will reach for the Zoom app. I don't want to like mirror over and I have given it a, a legitimate go. And again, it's choice, but it's just a matter of like, I don't want to add more stages into my apps and like, 
that Teams thing is doing that and Android is sort of doing that because it's like run Android apps by like mirroring your screen. But at the same time, run Android apps from the store. And it's like, what? Like, what's going on here? Like, or but you could use BlueStacks. Like, it's like a whole thing. And I realize Windows is all about like choice and uh, you can you know install whatever you want and this and that. And I'm not complaining about that. Obviously, I want to be able to do that. I don't want them to tell me what to do. But it's just one of those things where like I just don't feel I don't see the the need for uh like a degree of separation from the the native app. And this is just sort of a direction I'm seeing where like, oh, sorry, like like how many times is your WhatsApp app, your desktop app like disconnected from your phone? Probably a bunch. Mine has. And it's just like, oh, shit, like the phone went to sleep, this and that, because you're 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 casting it from the phone, right? Like not not either literally with the your phone app or you're using the WhatsApp desktop app and you're effectively casting the data if you will um over to the computer from the phone the phone has to be there the phone has to be alive and it's not like a facebook messenger where if your phone like literally gets like hucked out the window and it's not on anymore you can just use facebook messenger on the web you know it's because it's it's like it's it, it has to use the phone as like a relay and like we already have a point of failure now. We have like the phone connecting to the computer, connecting like it's it's just introducing another level of 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 issue. And this is probably actually why and this is an all personal problem. This is probably actually why I don't really trust like updating live tiles and stuff even though I don't really find them useful. Is that is that data up to date or did it not refresh? I don't know. And there's no way for me to tell. Am I going to press a refresh button? I'd rather just push the mail app button. So that's just one of those things where it's like it's just a degree of separation. And I just don't really see the reason why you would introduce this sort of uh, intermediate step to something like Teams. That's just one of the I don't know. Um, but I, I hope to bring it back to the real thing, because I had to like blurt out my idea before I forgot it again. I hope the Microsoft Store, you know, does well. I hope it starts getting some apps because I do use some like I use like the Netflix app and I use a couple other apps from there. So I hope that it does well. You know, I hope uh, developers start using it. Maybe Mike and I'll like play with like a really simplistic PWA and try to submit it there and see if we can get it on there just like for fun or something one day. But um, yeah, I don't know. What's, what's your thought on the on the intermediary stuff, Mike? Like, I know it's more that's less about the event and more about like preference, but still. Um, yeah, I don't like multiple steps as well, and I don't like separation of stuff like that. Um, I don't have too many strong thoughts on it, to be honest. Uh, but one thing, okay, so we're currently recording this right after the event. I've been kind of tweeting as we've been recording this, and there's people waiting for this episode to be out. Uh, so I just want to give a shout out to one person that's waiting because I told him I would. Anchor, uh, the anchor Tiagi, I think, on uh, on Twitter. So I told him I would give him a shout out just to prove that we are recording it and it's coming out soon. Uh, <laughs> no, it'll come out in, in four weeks. It's yeah. fine. No, it's fine. Yeah, I just I just wanted to kind of get get that in there a little bit. Uh but but yeah, like so honestly yeah, uh, the separation of the, the, the like the intermediary stuff is interesting, but like I I just don't it adding the Android apps to the store in my opinion is interesting, but I think it will add a level of complexity to everything as well. That's another part of this whole process. And I think it'll be a little bit chaotic because <laughs> you're going to be opening up apps. Like it's not like those Android apps are optimized for Windows. You're going to be opening up an app. It doesn't say it's an Android app. It's just going to say like TikTok or whatever, whatever you download. And it's going to open up in this tiny little screen that you can't modify. And it's going to be like, what the heck's going on here? So that's another complication and potential problem with the UX that I can see happening because of it. And another step that you might have to take in the intermediary kind of thing to, to figure stuff out. You might have to like label your own apps that you download as like android app or not i don't know but i think um having said that i think we do need to wrap it up right now i think we've i think we've covered pretty much everything that happened we covered in the around event. In windows what else have we covered we got around of windows the round of the windows store, is a big one yeah yeah <laughs> the search the start mm. in the center the gaming yeah, the tablet apparently, mode yeah. apparently it's free again uh hd uh sdr auto hdr for games i I don't really have much to say on that. Like, apparently, it'll it'll work, and you'll have to implement it a little bit. It'll work on a 10-year-old game, Skyrim. Yeah, it's weird that they showed <laughs> Skyrim. They might have done that for the memes. I posted about that on Twitter. But, yeah, like, it's it's a weird – that was a weird uh, little segue there that they that they did. But maybe it'll be good. I don't know. they got to make good on their seven-whatever-billion-dollar investment. Sure. I mean, they did that with Minecraft, too. They bought Minecraft, and then they showed Minecraft over and over again. They showed it for true. HoloLens and stuff. Very true. So they'll they they're using their their recent investment. 
Uh, but I think, yeah, I think that's the Windows event. We could talk about Windows for hours because we use it all the time. And uh, I think this has been a good uh, wrap up. I thought it was honestly going to be a 20 minute episode. It's Same. about an hour. It never is. That's why Web News never, never is 20 minutes like we want it to be because we always we like to rant. That's where you're like here to for. rant, like to rant. But this was a really informational, I think. And like, obviously, I had a couple of rants, but, uh, you know, with good reason. But, uh, you know, what do you, what did you think uh, about just final note, final sentences, Mike? What's your overall impression of Windows 11? Excited, not excited, good, bad. What, what What's going on? I like that it's a free upgrade. I'm I, I'm going to say I'm excited. I like I like new things. I, I'm I'm a person that just likes new technology and new software and stuff like that. So even if it's going to bring some problems in my development, uh, I, I'm excited to try it out. Uh, once the beta comes out, I, I already told Matt I'm going to throw it on one of my older laptops, try it out on there, see what it's like. So yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I would say the same thing. I don't know if I'm going to do the Insider build. I did Windows 10 Insider, which was fine. Uh, but I'm just, uh, I've, uh, I'm older now. So I just like, I'm like an old man and I'm just like, leave my tools alone. Um, literally. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing it on my main computers in any way, shape or form. Oh yeah. But I'm just also at the point where I just don't even want to even <laughs> until they're like, upgrade this. And I'll be like, no. And then eventually they'll be like, please. And like keep bugging me. Then I'll be like, okay, fine. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully, uh, hopefully it comes out. Uh, we heard in a headline for PC gamer. God knows if this is real um just because like i haven't confirmed it anywhere else apparently it's coming out in holiday season this year 2021 so hopefully it does and i uh as a really really brief closing note i hope the control panel is gone (laughs) it's not i don't want the control panel i don't want any of the old windows other than maybe the tech ones like the microsoft console i want them out of here you want the new settings then give me new settings i don't want to see it i don't want to hear about it again but apparently we're going to see and hear about it again according to mike so maybe it'll be gone by the time they actually release the, the, the final build. But it won't get this control panel out of here, man. Anyway, frick, like I was fighting for the control panel before. Now I'm used to the settings. Get this control panel out of here. I don't need two freaking settings. But anyway, like frick, like there's a reason why Android has has like one. Like I'm using a Samsung device. My settings are different than Mike's settings because we have two different device. Or no, you have a Samsung now, but you used to not. We had two different de- settings. It's not like I'm I have an S settings for Samsung settings and then a phone settings. Like it's ridiculous. Like one settings, please. Imagine having two settings on your iPad. Ridiculous. Anyway, get the control panel out of here. I don't want to see it ever again. Get it out of here. That's it. Anyway, hopefully they didn't change the design either. Like I don't want anyone to spend time with the control panel. Get it out of here. Um, but anyway, <laughs> like I said, we could talk about windows for hours. Uh, thank you for listening to this. This is like a really impromptu web news. Uh, we've never done something like this. That was been more or less live. So, uh, remember we're on Patreon if you want to support the show and things like this. Uh, if you're listening to this, cause it's the windows event, we do like actual web development and programming podcasts. Normally, uh, the web news is like our side show, if you will. And we're on pay. That is, uh, if you want to visit us on Patreon and donate or whatever, patron it or whatever you do, it's patreon.com slash HTML, all the things. Check out the tiers, give that a go. And many thanks to our $3 tier patrons, Sean from RabbitWorks JavaScript on YouTube.com slash RabbitWorks JavaScript, Garrick from Local Path Computing and Web Design on LocalPathComputing.com, Ryan Gatchel from Blue Black Digital on BlueBlackDigital.com, Chris from Self Made Web Designer on Self Made Web Designer.com, Tim from The Web Hacker on TheWebHacker.com, DL Ford from DLFord.io, Bib Hashdash from Nine Block Media on NineBlockMedia.com, Jason from Geek Life Radio via geekliferadio.com and Michael Curie from MC Web Studio via mcwebstudio.ca and Magnus from yesweb.se. Feel free to leave a comment or a review on the platform that you are listening to this on. And this non-outro, this is what I'm saying right now, is signing us off.